There was a time whereby setting goals for me was a dread. I did not look forward to it. I did not enjoy it because I felt like I was setting myself up for failure. Because yes, sometimes I would try to set goals. Sometimes I would not even bother and I would just go about my year. Sometimes when I do set goals, I would set goals but never really achieve them or actually work towards them because of my approach or my thinking when it comes to goal setting. But more than anything, I did not know how to properly set goals. And that is why for me it was a dread and working towards them was difficult and that I was always shooting myself on the foot in terms of just not working towards them. Fast forward to now, I've actually learned how to set goals. In 2023, I set I sat down and I set goals for myself. And some of those goals were my financial goals. And I was so happy last year when I was reviewing my goals. If you haven't watched that video, please go check it out. I'm gonna put it here. I was able to achieve many of the things that I had set for myself when it comes to my financial goals. Media, when I was reviewing my goals, I felt like I wasn't gonna achieve my targets, I wasn't gonna achieve my goals. And then end of the year things just shifted and so this year i am going in head on and i'm just being so ambitious this year and i'm pushing myself even more this year because i do know that with what i was able to achieve in 2023 i can actually replicate that and push myself even further to achieve the goals that i've set for myself in 2024 and so today i'm going to be taking you guys through my main goal and then the checkpoints that i'm going to be working on as my navigation to see if i'm working towards this one main goal and only focusing on my financial goals the rest of my goals i'm going to be doing on my january reset but for now we're just gonna actually i'm gonna do that on my 2023 2024 reset but for now we're just gonna be focusing on my financial goals okay, so for my 2024 main goal i want to be working towards financial freedom now financial freedom is not something that you can just work on in one year and say oh i've achieved it because this is something that varies and also Financial freedom is kind of big. To me, financial freedom means living a life whereby I do not have to wake, I, I wake up to go to work because I choose to. I have more than enough savings. I have more than enough investment. I am living a life whereby what I have allows me to live a good, uh, uh, to maintain a good standard of living without feeling the need to have to work. Right now, when I wake up and I work, I work because I need the money in order for me to maintain the standard of living that, I'm, that I have. Have. but I want to get to a point whereby I do not have to wake up and go to work I choose to wake up and go to work and that is why I say I cannot just say in one year I've done this all of the things all of these things and say I've reached financial freedom I am still a long way to get there but I know that with the things that I'm working on each and every year I'm actually getting closer and closer to achieving that goal of mine which is financial freedom and so my main goal is going to continue to be financial freedom for the next foreseeable future until I get to a point whereby I feel like I have reached it and for me one of the things that I know that will be an indication that I've reached it is when I've paid off this house or something that I know that okay I no longer have this big debt such as a house now I don't have a goal to pay off my my house right now because I want to set up myself in a different way for me by paying off my house is not something that is agent right now it's not something that I can say I want to do that right now because I am comfortably doing that and it's really not putting pressure on my finances I would rather use my current finances the surplus that I have channeling it in investments whereby it can bring me you know interest that I can then know that eventually when I have the sum of money then I can start attacking my bond but right now I do not want to rush into attacking my bond while I know very well that I haven't gotten to the target that I want when it comes to my emergency fund I haven't gotten to a target that I want when it comes to my child investment I haven't gotten to a target that I want when it comes to my own investments so I need to work on those things first feel secure on those things first and then I can then say I'm going to be attacking such a big thing such as paying off my bond now let's get to the checkpoints that I'm going to be setting up as navigation for me to see if I am working towards this main goal which is financial freedom so i've broke down my goals i've broke down my goals into long term medium term and short term so the first goal that i have under my long term goal is building my wealth i recently collaborated with frank and they are also sponsoring the portion of this video thank you so much frank group for partnering with me in the portion of this video now i did a reel talking about me wanting to build wealth and me setting up my goal of building wealth and i decided that it is time for me to start 
start thinking long term because for a long time I've been working on just short term things whereby I really wanted to free up as much of my disposable income as much as possible. And that was for me paying off much of my debts as much as possible as well as just understanding my finances. But now that I've done these things, I feel like I'm at the right stage whereby I can now start thinking long term. And that is why for me, I decided that it's time for me to start building up my wealth. And the platform that I'm going to be using to do that is going to be Frank Group. Now, if you are not new in this channel, you know I talk about Frank Group a lot when it comes to my investments or my savings because uh, it is one platform that I use largely and I enjoy. I like how they use, how they've taken the concept of goal based investing and just used it on their platform and this actually is the reason why I was I'm able to invest each and every month because I know that I'm investing towards a goal a goal that I've set for myself and so this year I created a second goal now for those people who may not know before you were able to set one goal and then create additional additional um additional account for your dependents like for me i had my emergency fund and i then had my investment for my child now you are able to set more than one goal you are able to set another goal on top of that so that is where i'm going to be put i i created my wealth building goal and so that's going to be that's my second goal so when it comes to building my world i set up the second goal which is building world under the friend group app and each and every month i put a target of investing three thousand towards this goal for a period of five years i think by the end of five years it's going to be over two hundred thousand and so this for me is going to be my first phase of building my world this is not it because i understand that when we're talking about world we're talking about something different you know we're not talking about just hundred thousand and then saying hey that's your world when we're talking about wealth we want to get to a point whereby our our net worth is you know a substantial amount and so when i'm looking at my world when i'm looking at this money that is two hundred and something thousand by end of five years my goal or my plan or my thinking let me just say my thinking when it comes to this is i want to then take this chunk of money you know once i know that i've got this two hundred thousand take this chunk of money and put towards my bond and it's going to put this going to decrease my bond substantially like right now on my bond it's about five hundred and something thousand so if if in five years I'm able to put close to 300,000, I literally bring my bond down to a point whereby I can finish my bond much quicker. That is my goal. And that is why when I'm saying, I'm thinking when I'm saying building wealth, it's not a matter of just putting money and just letting it accumulate. Yes, I'll still be having my other investment, which I'm going to talk about later. But then this one, I want to put my money in a platform that I know that it can grow when it comes to the interest. And I can also stay committed, committed and be consistent when it comes to putting this money away. And then when I reach my goal, when I get to that five years, take this chunk of money and deal with one of the, and deal with this big, big debt that I have. Now I know that when I get to that point, it will allow for my net worth to increase because I would have decreased my debt to a certain portion and that is where I want to get to to get to a point whereby what I owe is less than what I own that way I can literally say okay now when it comes to my wealth this is what I'm worth you know, that's why we start talking about net worth. That is my first goal, which is going to be 3000 per month and saving it for five years. And then my second long-term goal is to max out my tax-free account when under easy equities. Now this, in 2023, I was able to do this and it was not even a goal of mine, but I just decided that it's time for me to start doing this. And this year I want to continue that each and every year, my goal is to max out my tax-free and make sure that I'm putting money in there so that it can just continue to work for me and so how I'm going to be doing that when it comes to this let me see my plan because I have my plans down here I'm looking at my 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 this journal by the way I don't have my I'm using this right now because I don't have my normal journal as yet the one that I designed and the one that I sold that that sold out because we are still I'm still waiting for the stock to arrive from the printers they're opening tomorrow which is going to be Monday it's a Sunday that as I'm filming this so when they open on the 8th I'm hoping that they will ship the orders sometime between the 8th and the, and the 13th of January then I can ship it to all of you guys that have bought so if you bought in December please know that your journal is coming but i haven't gotten them yet as soon as i get them i'm gonna ship them to you 
so i also don't have the journal that's why i'm still using this but as soon as i get my journal i'm going to transfer my goals into my journal okay so my plan is to take a portion of my bonus money put it in there and then so when i get my bonus in may i'm going to put in um, I'm going to put in over 10,000 into that. And then when it comes to my business, any money that I make, I'm going to put a portion of that into my tax free. And then obviously when I make money in my, in my business, I also have to take into account tax. So I only take money that I know that I'm not going to need. And then I still keep money for taxes as well. So I'm going to take any money that I make in my business. I'm going to take and put it into my, my tax free account as well as any money that I make on my side hustles i'm going to take and put in here and make sure that i just mix out now here i'm also investing for wealth purposes as well so it's another component of building my wealth that is my second goal when it comes to my long-term goal and then now let's get into my short-term goals my first one is my image to fund even though this is when you talk of emergency fund, this is money that you want to be ha to have access of, be it that you need it. But that they might they might be a long time whereby you do not tap into it like for me a year can end like a, a whole year can start and finish without me tapping into my emergency fund and that is because of how i budget but more than anything my other savings as well you know we're going to get into my sinking funds i'm going to share that with you and how i i save on other things as well that i'm able to tap on those savings without rushing into my emergency fund and that is why i classify this one as my medium term gold and so my emergency fund i did fully fund it last year in terms of the thirty thousand that i needed but obviously thirty thousand is not for me it's not enough for me to leave on to say that okay this is enough because i need to have at least six months of my living expenses and right now i'm at a point where i'm thinking of shifting careers and for me to do that and comfortably do that i really want to make sure that my emergency fund is fully funded so that i know that be it that things happen if I do shift my careers that I know that I do have that money that can help me to survive for a certain period of time so when it comes to my merchant to fund I want to build it up again so what I did last year is I I saved I saved up until it was 30,000 and I took a portion of that and then I invested it towards my tax free account. I put it on my tax free account under Easy Quitties and then it brought it down to about 13,000. And so right now, as I'm going to be starting, I'm going to be starting off from 13,000 and building it up again to 35,000. My goal is to make it 35,000 by the end of this year. And so, how I'm going to be doing that is that each and every month I'm going to be depositing 1,300. It's no longer going to be 1,210. I'm increasing it because the inflation goes up each and every year. And so is my investments. And so this year is going to be 1,300. The 1,300 that I'm going to be putting towards this. Another thing that I want to do is I'm going to take a portion of my bonus and I'm going to put it on this invest on, on this tax, on, on this emergency fund so that I can get to my goal that I want. Because if I save 1,300, it's not going to be enough for me to reach the 35,000 that I've set for myself. So I'm going to need some other monies that will help to bump it up. So I'm going to be using my, my bonus money to do that. Now, the next goal that I have here, now that I'm looking at my, now that I'm looking at it, it's actually not a medium term goal. It's a long term goal because it's my invest, it's the invest, it's my investment for my daughter. Now here I want, I'm going to continue investing for her. I've been investing for her. I'm using Frank Group to do this as well. And so I'm going to continue using the platform. I'm going to continue investing for her each and every month. Now what I've done differently this year is that I've bumped it up a little bit because as I said, when I talked about the image and to find the issue of the inflation. So I'm must also adjust my investments each and every year and so instead of saving i've been saving each i've been investing 1000 per month this year i'm going to be investing 1100 so i bumped it up with 100 rands so i'm going to be investing that for 12 months again which is going to be around 13000 by the end of the year and so this is money that is go is invested towards her future education fund now this is money that i'm only going to tap into when she turns 18 or when it's time for her to go to university that is 
where I'm going, this money that I'm going to be using to fund her education. So this is basically a long-term goal, not a short-term goal, not a medium-term goal. I should have put it, I should have put it, I should have added it on my long-term goals. So that is one of the goals that I'm going to be working on this year. Now let's get to my short-term goals. Now these are my savings, not investments, because once we start talking about short-term goals, it's no longer investments. Investment is something that you put in for a long time and where you are actually investing it in a, in a market. But when it comes to short-term goals, you don't want to be investing in a JSE market. You want to put money where it's going to be easily accessible and it's not subject to how the market is going whether it's good or bad and so that's where we start talking about short-term goals now one thing you'll, re you'll realize with all of my goals is how diversified they are and i really want to encourage you that as you're setting your goals this year really diversify your goals so when it comes to my savings this year i'm going to have the first one is going to be in a stock fall. Now, this is what I, I was part of the stock fall last year. And this is stock fall that I put in money and I save this money. I, I save a thousand per month. And this is money that allows me to channel towards my child's education cost beginning of the year. Like this year, we just got to pay out on the 3rd of January. And that is money that now I'm sitting and waiting for when the schools open. And then I can be able to buy uniform for her, pay for her school fees for the entire year. You know, know that we are covered when it comes to her school school things like for her to be able to attend school so that is what i use that stock fell money for so that's the first thing that, that is a, that is the first checkpoint that i'm going to be having under my savings so that will be under the stock fall a thousand per month and then i'm going to have sinking funds i'm going to have three sinking funds now i'm having sinking funds because i know now the monies that i need in the year for me to be able to say okay i'm covered when it comes to this so the first one when it comes to sinking fund the first one that i'm going to have is the december fund now December I was able to hire a car. So when it comes to the December fund, it's, it's, it's also the same thing. I want to be able to hire a car when I go home. So I'm going to put a target of 10,000. Now I know that I need more than this now, be it that I've done it now and I understand how much it costs. So this year I'm going to put a target of 10,000, but if I can push in, like if I can get paid more, I get more unexpected money. I want to channel it towards this, you know, so that I can have at least 15,000, but I want to, don't, I don't want to set a goal of 15,000 knowing well, knowing very well that right now, when I look at my budget, it wouldn't be possible for me to work towards this. So I'm setting a target of 10,000 and then each and every month I'm going to be putting away 910 and I'm going to be saving it on time bank so that I'm able to track it. So that is where I'm going to be keeping this first sinking fund. The second two sinking fund, I'm going to be using my cash stuff to do them and then and yeah i'm gonna be using my cash stuffing to do them when i reach a certain a certain amount where i feel like i don't want to be sitting with this much cash i'm gonna take it and put it into my time bank account so i'm gonna share with you each and every month when i'm doing my cash stuffing for my sinking funds how i'm going to be doing this so the first one that i'm going to have is for birthdays now i know that there are birthdays that i normally spend money on and so what i want to do is i want to save for that i'm setting a target of six thousand and this is not to say when I get to 6,000, I'm going to say I'm okay. I'm just saying that it's going to be 6,000. I don't really have any ambitions for it to be more than 6,000. But so long as I know that, okay, each and every month I'm putting in this much money that can allow me to then that when it's someone's birthday, I have that money that I can tap into to spoil that person or to gift that person something on their birthday. So I'm going to be putting away 600 per month towards the sinking fund. And so I know that when my when it's my daughter's birthday, at least I'll have 1,200 that I can spend on her. And then the second sinking fund that I'm going to have is house to home. Even though my house is already like, I feel like this is a home. I've done a lot of things. But then there are other things that I want to be able to do. I want to like, I want to change the curtains in the living room. I want to buy new bedding for my bed. I want to buy a headboard for my daughter. And so all these things are going to need money. And so I want to save up for the things that I may need for the house. This is not to say I'm going to build it up to a certain amount and then use it, but it's just to say I'm putting money away so that if I feel a need or I see something at the shops that I want to buy for the house, I know that I have a fund for that. And so I'm going to tap into that fund to take that money to buy those things 
for the house you know if i may want to buy a new cutlery i know that i can tap into that fund and use that money and so that is what it's going to be for to save per month a minimum of 500 rands towards this and build it up until 3000 if it ends up being more then it's fine but my goal is to have at least 500 rates per month. And this is money, as I said, will allow me to buy things for the house. If I see something that I like for the house, I can be able to tap into this. Another goal that I did not mention, which I feel like it's something that I want to, I will definitely be investing. I'm going to be saving for is my, it's a how, it's a buying the next property, even though, I'm not really sure about this. It it can I can either go two ways. Like at this point, I would rather go and rent a bigger place or I would rather sell this place and buy another house. I'm really not sure where I'm sitting on that one or I can renovate this one in terms of doing the kitchen. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing, but all I know is that I want to save money. I'm, I wanna save money on the side for the potential of any of this decision, of these things happening. If, we, if I happen that I want to get a new property, I wanna be able to know that I have some money that I've saved up that I can use for that purpose. If I happen that I decide that, okay, I want to change the kitchen. I know that I've got money that I've saved up that I can use for that or if it happens that I want to move I know that I've got money that I've saved up that I can use for that so like I'm not really being strict with myself on this one but I'm just going to be saving this per month I'm not going to be saving it per month but it's money that I'm going to putting away when I get like a bonus so my bonus I'm going to split it in many ways portion of it is going to go towards this other thing the portion of it's going to go towards a thing and then a portion of it is going to go towards this as well so my goal is to have at least twenty thousand saved up on this thing on this goal that i'm is really quite vague i'm also not sure where it's going to go but i just want to make sure that at least i've got twenty thousand that i can say is saved up for any of these things potentially happening you know like really right now i would love to have a bigger space because we are outgrowing this space much quicker and I really need more space for me to be able to run my business and it's very hard like right now I'm sitting with a box of cash envelopes here that I received and I don't have a space for it it's just sitting here in my living room and that is where my di diaries were sitting but it was nice with my diaries because when they arrived they were also going out because they were already bought but with this one I have to launch it and all the stuff and so as I grow my business when it comes to buying things you know I want to be able to store those things and all the stuff have a designated room where I can film Right now, I have to do a lot of things in order for me to film. So that is why I'm saying we're outgrowing the space, the space so quickly. I need more space that can be functional for me to be able to be effective, you know, just be able to do my things and not have to think or have to do a lot of things in order for me to be able to just sit down and say hi to you guys and film a video. So I know that this is something that I'm I would love for them to happen. I don't know when they're going to happen, how they're going to happen. All I know is what I can do is prepare myself financially. And so I'm going to be putting money away when I get my bonus. A certain amount, I'm going to put it away so that when it's that time, when that time arises, I know that I've got money for any of these things potentially happening. So those are all my goals in a nutshell. And all of them in total, I want to be able to save and invest a minimum of 100,000 this year. Last year, it was 80 something thousand and I was able to meet the, the target. This year, I'm pushing it to 100,000. I want to make sure that a minimum of 100,000 is saved and invested by the end of this year. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that this inspires you to sit down and plan for your financial goals, things that you wanna work on this year. Don't put too much, don't put pressure on yourself, but make sure that when you're setting these goals, you are very realistic. What I did first before I even did all of these things, I sat down and set a budget and then from there I was like, okay, this is how much money I have. How can I allocate it? So I would really advise you to do that when it comes to your finances. Don't just set random goals. Be clear about how much money you have to allocate towards these things and then set your goals. So with that being said, I'll see you guys on the next one. Please take care and stay safe. Bye.